Jungle Cruise. Dave, I know this is one of your favorite rides at Disney. I know you were like, man, I really need a movie about the background of Jungle Cruise. I mean, it, the, I'm joking, but like the real thing is like they're redoing it, right? And they are like kind of making it, uh, you know, related to the movie as they're like updating this theme park ride. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't believe like a big thing with their, their original iteration of the ride was just like the caricatures of the natives and stuff. And like you would yeah. see anecdotes of people that used to work at the park. And you kind of see it on the faces of uh, people on the ride that weren't white and how their kind of expression would change when they would see this kind of like otherization of these like native folks and whatnot. So in general, just an important thing to to change, to make your ride uh, just more welcoming. It's not like it's changing the enjoyability of the ride in any way. So good to see. And, you know, it's funny, like everyone's like, this is the first uh first ride movie from disney they've been remaking all their animated movies and now they need more ip so they're going to get to the rides and we know the scarlett johansson tower of terror reboot may or not be may or may not be happening but kind of forgot pirates of the caribbean is actually based off a ride too hmm that's true yeah you know it, obviously it's, so it's, long ago 2003 it's been a i was gonna minute. say it's so long ago i kind of forgot that the ride came first yeah man Oh, that that's like jogging my memory now. Also, I don't really think about the pirate movies very much anymore. But yeah, those first couple, a... not too bad. First one's first awesome. one's great. First trilogy is quite enjoyable, but uh, the fifth one came out in 2017, and that's the last of them. And let's talk about a reboot. I think Margot Robbie was perhaps attached to that as of late, but Pirates of the Caribbean definitely had its run, made a lot of money, and Disney definitely wanted to have Jungle Cruise maybe not be a Pirate Flow franchise, perhaps be like a national treasure I saw as something thrown out there as a comp. And now that's coming out during the pandemic, you know, it's hard to have box office expectations. But either way, the movie is out. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Emily Blunt, Jesse Plemons. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's just the top three. I mean, this cast is pretty deep, man. I mean, uh, Edgar Ramirez is playing the, uh, the, I guess, like the, kind of villain i don't know if you can really call him a villain i don't know kind of uh you know and then you have uh paul giamatti just really playing a very bit role showing up for like two or three scenes uh obviously doing like one day of shooting you know just in and out um i thought this movie jungle cruise 2021 was just fine (laughs) i don't know it was exactly kind of what i expected it uh, I think there were some moments that I was a little bit like, oh, this is a lot more enjoyable than I expected. But overall, it's just very Disney cookie cutter to me. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think the nice thing is that it's centered around Emily Blunt as the protagonist. And, um, you know, this doctor, you know, in the early 19 or 20th century. And, uh, you know, kind of, I think, highlighting the way women were treated back then and and putting a female protagonist as a capable person in this is a right. nice and thoughtful touch but you know overall i just kind of thought it was meh what did you think yeah i totally agree i mean it's a family film yeah and it's like at least watchable for families and the, the parents will not be pulling their hair out watching this the way they would be watching like a paw patrol movie or something but mm-hmm. still has a lot of flaws and ultimately i think it's just like the characterization of the rock and blunt's characters i still found like quite like bland like there's so much cgi oh, yeah. in this film i couldn't help but this feel like they were just playing themselves yep like i love emily blunt she's been in some amazing movies given some great performances but this she was even even though the character at least has like there's some inspiration to it at least or as, aspirational nature to it but <laughs> it I don't know, like her dynamic with The Rock was kind of blah to me. And The Rock was just kind of doing what he always does. And like, he, he's a charismatic guy, but he, does, he doesn't know how to tap into different parts of his abilities as an actor. He always kind of does the same thing he always does. And I guess the thing that I like most about this is that there actually were some kind of like twists and turns with our narrative. I wasn't expecting everything that was coming. I also wasn't think, trying to think like 10 steps ahead of where's jungle cruise gonna take me you know i wasn't 
you know, just kind of along for the ride on our, on our lazy river here. But yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's whatever, honestly. And the, the funniest part is you get Jesse Plemons literally arguing with a bunch of bees in the submarine. I know. You can't get that's that great. anywhere else. So that's something. J- Jesse Plemons was by far the best part of this movie <laughs> to me, just because he was, um, he was on like level a hundred every time he's on screen. And I just did not get that same feeling from Emily Blunt and the rock. I got to say it, your, your point on the rock, on the rock, just being the rock in every movie now, it, it definitely true. I did for a second, give the movie a lot of credit because I was like, Oh, you know, they're kind of making the rock a shitty person in this movie, you know, backstabbing two timing these people the whole way. But then you find out, Oh no, he's not really doing that because he's uh Right. He's this like mythical creature who is yeah. stopped he's cursed you know, spell. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, well, there you go. That's that that shows that he's not actually a bad person. And I, the most impressive thing in this whole movie is when the rock gets shot or yes. stabbed or falls backwards and he throws the perfect throw mid air, like a hundred yards to Emily Blunt with that like stone or arrowhead or whatever it was. Arrowhead. I just yeah. like lost my mind. That was like. It was like I don't know, some Patrick Mahomes type shit, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's Dom Toretto diving across the highway to catch <laughs> Letty and land on a moving vehicle. Yeah, incredible <laughs> stuff right there. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know if there's a lot to talk about on this. I mean, any any like scenes or, or parts that I guess you really liked or that stood out? Yeah, I mentioned the B stuff. That was just amusing. Yeah. Um, I guess like the reveal of when you get the cursed conquistadors or whatever <laughs> and like how like the effects of like how they're cursed and how they've been changed and then then the reveal of how like they like get sucked back and they leave the river and then you learn about the rock's true identity like i thought that that was kind of fun i guess and like like the rock it's like you see him fucking fall hard after getting stabbed i'm watching that i'm like hmm they really killed the rock halfway through damn didn't expect <laughs> that huh and they bring him back, and he's like, I'm alive. And I'm like, God damn. He really just said he's back to life. At least they're like, no, he's he's like immortal. I was like, okay, okay, that's cool. That's cool. That was a, I think that was a good way to reveal it, you know? Like, I'll mm-hmm. give him that. But, like, the last, like, 30 minutes when, like, you get to the um, Tears of the Moon or whatever, and, like, everything's revealed in, like, the last set piece, it's like, I was pretty just, because I wasn't invested in the narrative. I wasn't invested in the character, so that felt pretty bland to me, you know? Um, and trying to like make the cursed characters more sympathetic i just don't think you get enough time with them to really like invest there in fact like the effects that like what edgar ramirez remind me a lot of the effects for um uh javier bardem's uh was it blackbeard character his villain character in pirates 5 those effects kind of mm. similar to me as far yeah. as theme, theme park disney rides go but yeah it's um it's a, it, it's a kid's movie. It's tough to take much out of it, but I, I want more out of The Rock when he's in the lead. Yeah, I um, I think the, the, the takeaway for me is they came very close to doing some very courageous things for a Disney kids movie and then just like backed off it. That's what However, they always do. Yeah, one moment that I thought was really nice was the way that they handled uh, Jack Whitehall's character, McGregor Houghton, and his sexuality where... Yeah. You know, they they weren't, I guess, explicit about it, but the way that The Rock responded was, I think, a good model for yeah. children, just kind of being like, oh, okay, whatever, like kind of that kind of thing. And uh, overall, that was nice, but... Yeah. I think know, I actually just realized what my favorite part was. It was when uh, when you, we learned that The Rock is uh, immortal, and then Emily Blunt has to take the uh, like spear or knife out of his back because he's been impaled. And they just go back and back and forth with each other for a good minute, making consistent sexual innuendo references. Uh-huh. And it was actually like really funny. I was like, wow, I didn't think yeah. you'd get that in the kids movie because that's going to go over 100% of kids' heads. But that's yep. actually a great moment for the parents. I, you know, this, you just kind of jog my memory. When they have to like go underwater and, and Emily Blink is stuck in that trap and, mm-hmm. you know, Rock has to kind of like coach her through how to get out of there. Um she could definitely have fit through like several different openings in that trap, which I was just kind of like, Oh, this is a bit of a a plot hole for me. Um, Also, I just, 
feel like there was so much like additional BS with this man. Like the whole storyline with Paul Giamatti. I mean, what was even the point? Like, why was he in this? I don't know. Yeah, and <laughs> there's actually some funny quotes from Giamatti about playing the character wanting to like be a guy with a monocle chewing on a cigar with an accent. And he actually gave a very similar quote about a different role he did. I forget what movie it was. It was something similar, though. He does like a really bit part. And it's like, is this just Giamatti's thing? It's like he'll just pay, <laughs> take some like quick like scale pay and show up for a day if he gets to be a weird, weird, like out there character. Because if so, more power to him, man. Just yeah, take, take I, a I quick like check that. and have fun. That's acting. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Crazy. Uh, yeah, Jungle Cruise, good for kids, good for families. If you don't fit in that category, you can probably skip. But yeah, Dave, I, I advise that. 